All right, so today is April 2nd, 2018. I am interviewing Angela Polk Jones. Yes. Angela Polk Jones, mm -hmm. um, the current and founding president, um, principal of the Middle College at UNCG, about her time at UNCG mm -hmm. and leading up to where she is now. So okay. we'll just sort of start at the bio stuff intro and we'll just okay. go on from there. Sounds so good. So when and where were you born? I was born, gosh, in 1967 in Chesterfield, South Carolina, mm -hmm. um, to Mary Tillman and Alvin Polk. Mm -hmm. yes. And so, uh, what did your parents do? Um, my parents were sharecroppers. Um, actually, neither one of them got a high school diploma. Um, but I believe my dad was, um, I think he may have made it to like ninth grade, and I think my mom may have made it to sixth or seventh grade. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, neither one of them graduated from mm -hmm. high school. And so when you were in high school, well, maybe I should first ask, when did you start playing basketball? I actually started playing basketball in third grade. Really? Yes, we moved into the Hampton Homes projects um, when I was in third grade. And um, the community center, Warnersville Community Center, was in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And my brothers uh, played football. And I actually was a cheerleader um, for, you know, the, the, the Pee Wees and, and, you know, we all were young, mm -hmm. third, fourth, fifth grade. And then the basketball season came around. And I think there was a little bit of pressure because my brothers were playing football, so I wanted to do something also besides cheer. Um, I'm the baby of seven, and all of my older siblings had played sports mm -hmm. um, at Grimsley High School. And so sports was a part of our family. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, in third grade, I went out for the basketball team up at Warnersville Community Center. Mm -hmm. um, didn't know a thing about it. Um, remember uh, not even knowing how to do a layup. <laughs> and um, Coach Scales, mm -hmm. I remember the, the coach, mm -hmm. he took me aside and he told me to pretend like I had a ball in my hand and just go left, right, up, mm -hmm. left, right, up. Mm -hmm. And so I just kept doing that, you know, without the ball. Mm -hmm. And I transferred it to actually doing it on the court. Mm -hmm. And um, I, that is when I developed a love for basketball. Mm -hmm. um, and I can, I, you know, I started, like I said, in third grade. And I remember um, when I got to middle school, um, I was, I continued to cheer while I played basketball mm -hmm. um, but when I got to middle school they told me I couldn't do both mm. and that was a problem because <laughs> uh, I loved cheering because I was one of the co-captains for the cheering squad mm -hmm. um, but I also love sports um, the, the competitive part of it um, and so I chose basketball over cheerleading mm -hmm. and I'm glad that I did mm -hmm. I, I'm glad that I did and you played in middle school you play in high school yes. as well I played um, basketball, volleyball, and softball mm -hmm. in middle school. That was at Jackson. Um, it was Jackson Junior High at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I went to Grimsley, I continued to play mm -hmm. um, all sports and actually lettered in all three sports. Wow, mm -hmm. very impressive. Yeah, and, I, and I used to really, um, during basketball season, I'd say, I'm going to college to play basketball, doing softball. I'm going to play softball. <laughs> doing volleyball, I'm going to play so you know, volleyball. Um, and so it was, you know, I just had a real... Um, genuine passion mm -hmm. for the competitive side um, of sports mm -hmm. um, because it just it, sports it teaches you so much more than people realize mm -hmm. um, it teaches you self-discipline mm -hmm. you know teamwork um, it, it just makes you hungry um, to perfect something mm -hmm. um, and so that was that's how I looked at sport mm -hmm. and sports and I took that same attitude in the classroom as well mm -hmm. um, so for me um, sports and, and basketball, I mean, it was it was a perfect match. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And so you were doing all the sports, but all, um, but when you were looking at colleges and when you were a uh, senior year, junior year, you're looking at colleges and what you wanted to do academically, mm -hmm. what was appealing to you on that side? Well, I had I always wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, when I was, you know, obviously when you're young, you play school, you, you know, you do those things, you play doctors and all that. Mm -hmm. But I just really, I, I wanted to be a teacher mm -hmm. and um, I believe it was my junior year um, at Grimsley High School. Mm -hmm. um, Coach Dick Knox was my math teacher. 
and I was in geometry and he made me feel so smart. He made me feel very intelligent. Um, and so, I mean, I'll never forget when he um, was bragging to all of his classes about Angie Polk is the only one that got that, um, you know, that proof right. And so it was just like, I want, you know, want to stick my chest out. I was like, wow, you know, because other students saying, Coach Knox told us, you, you know, you got the problem right. Um, and so that for me, um, that was really encouraging and it made me feel, um, it, it just gave me a, a boost in my self-confidence. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I will say, it's not that I, I've never had a low self-esteem because mm -hmm. Being the baby of seven in a single home, um, one would think that, oh, um, had the worst life ever, but we didn't. Um, one thing that my mother did is she showered us with love. Um, the camaraderie, the close-knit family that we had. Um, she had, my mom had sisters and brothers and they all chipped in and helped her because then she was a single mother of seven mm -hmm. living in the projects. Um, but it's sort of interesting because some of my cousins um, who didn't live in the projects, they said, we want to live over here with y'all. It was like, <laughs> You know, because they used to come over our house and we would have so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, my mom was very strict, very firm, but loving. Mm -hmm. um, no nonsense, um, held you accountable. Um, and so a lot of that is what carried over, you know, to what I do on the, did on the court, mm -hmm. what I do now currently. Um, I, did, I remember my mom working, oh my goodness, she would go in at seven o'clock in the morning and not get off until 11 o'clock at night. She mm -hmm. would work double shifts because her manager or supervisor knew she had seven kids mm -hmm. um, and knew she had to work mm -hmm. a lot. And so um, he enabled her to work double shifts a lot. I mean, sometimes she'd go in at three o'clock and not get off until the next morning. And so my siblings, my older siblings, again, remember I'm the youngest of seven, mm -hmm they were responsible for making sure we had dinner, mm -hmm. we got our work done, um, and those things. And, you know, I had one sister, she was not the oldest, but um, <laughs> it is funny when I think about it. She she was the shortest one in the, out of all the kids, but she was the, I don't want to say the meanest, but she didn't play. Mm -hmm. And she used to literally make us sit at the um, kitchen table to eat all of our food, and she would make us eat vegetables, and we didn't want to. I mean, she was give us water and be like, drink it down with the water if you have to, but you're not getting up until you drink, until mm. you eat all of it. Mm -hmm. um, and she tell you gonna sit there and do your homework. And so um, everybody chipped in mm -hmm. to make sure that, um, you know, the younger siblings got what they needed um, mm. as far as the homework and things like that is concerned. Um, my father, um, he, he wasn't in the picture. Um, he would come by every now and then, might see him. Um, you know, he's in the picture now, mm -hmm. which I'm thankful, um, but didn't really grow up in, um, interacting with him a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, had a few um, opportunities to go visit him in Maryland um, and, you know, spend a little bit of time with him here and there sporadically, but there was no consistency in it. Sure. Um, but, you know, it's just one of those things. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, I turned out okay. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. And we're um, we're uh, we're your senior year. We're looking at colleges. What are where are we considering? Well, and actually, that is so very interesting about mm -hmm. my, my how I ended up at UNCG mm -hmm. because I was what they called a sleeper in college, okay. a sleeper athlete or sleeper ba basketball player. Meaning, you don't realize how much damage the person is doing until you look at the stats. Mm -hmm. um, you may not have known that Angie Polk at the time had, you know, five assists and nine rebounds with her 10 points. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was it was one of those things that people would focus on, quote unquote, the star on the team. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't necessarily considered the star mm -hmm. on the team. Um, and so as time was getting close, I was I was like, I don't know where I'm going. Where, where am I going to go? Mm -hmm. And so um, at the time, Miriam Brewer was the women's basketball coach. She had been, I think she had been the college, I mean, been the coach at um, Appalachian. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's where she came from. But anyway, um, I, I remember sitting down with her and she was, we were talking about, you know, what my options were. And she said, well, what about you ever considered, you thought about UNCG right down the street? 
and I'm like, oh, you know, I don't see anything because I heard great things. You know, they were doing really well. Mm -hmm. And so she said, let's call. And so she called um, Coach Ag, mm -hmm. and um, we set up an, a meeting. And um, I came on UNCG's campus at the time. The athletic office was in the log cabin that was on the hill. Uh, where was it? I think it was right. I think it was right here. Yeah. This is in this in this area. The log cabin. Okay. I believe it was on this um, this hill. Um, and so this it was. I met here, met Coach Age with Coach Brewer, and we talked and everything. And she said, I do know you. I have seen you play. I've watched. And it's like, oh, okay. So, you know, had a great meeting. Um, time went left. Time, a little bit of time passed. Um, by then, I think I had gotten some interest from Elon and Lenore Ryan. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wasn't sure, you know, didn't know a whole lot about Lenore Ryan, um, didn't know. Uh, well, New Elon was right down the street. Mm -hmm. And so, um, getting frustrated, I just called Coach AG one day. <laughs> and I know she probably, she may have already told this story, but I, I just said, do you want me or not? Because <laughs> I was frustrated. <laughs> sure. You know, and she laughed and she said, of course we do. And so, um, after that, we, um, you know, set up the meeting, got everything, the paperwork and all that stuff taken care of. And then... I came here in August of 2000, no, excuse me, 2000, 1985. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 1985. 1985. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's how I ended up here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, did you go to any um, orientations beforehand? Or was your only time here meeting with Coach AG? That, that was my first encounter with UNCG. Did you have um, any first impressions at that point of the campus? Well, um, no, my first impressions came when I actually moved on campus. Okay. Because during the summer, nobody's here. Right. And so you don't really get to see. But I do recall when on uh, move in day. Mm -hmm. And my mom, I think, it was, I know it was my mom, was my brother with him, but there were one or two of my siblings that came also. And we're moving in, and I remember. Um, being very nervous, very scared, um, and you know, I remember us unpacking, unloading everything. Um, at the time, I was in North Spencer, you know, North and South Spencer was right there, mm -hmm. and so um, was in the dorm. And I remember going back in there, and I just cried. <laughs> I cried. I was like, "Oh my God!" You know, because I really hadn't been anywhere mm -hmm. uh, or been away from home like that mm -hmm. um, but I remember some of the upperclassmen Natalie Connor came by Julia Weaver a couple of little, you know the upperclassmen came by to check on me mm -hmm. and that made me feel better mm -hmm. and then I remember walk you know as I was going to either an orientation or walk across campus and stuff, everybody was just really friendly and so um, I started to get comfortable and as I was meeting people from out of state, from different countries, the thing that they kept saying is like, wow, people in North Carolina are really nice, you know, and I hadn't thought of that. And as I've gotten older, it's like, you know, that Southern hospitality, there's something to it mm -hmm. um, because there, there is um, a certain level of um, unity, a certain level of, um, well, togetherness, unity, all of it, to, you know, we're one. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I felt that. I felt comfortable after I got over watching my mother and siblings, you know, drive away and mm -hmm. leaving me behind, even though they were only 15 minutes away. Right. It still didn't matter because I wasn't going to be in the house with my mom. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that, that that that's the thing that I do remember is um, after getting over that initial shock, shock is feeling very um, at home, mm -hmm. um, having, as I said, a sense of belonging. Um, even back then, um, the racial makeup of the university now is far different than it was then. Mm -hmm. 
but it wasn't a big deal to me. It wasn't, I don't recall seeing that as a big issue for me at the time. Okay. Um, I think when I look back on things now, I can say that there probably were some underlying things that I didn't notice mm -hmm. um, that I go, oh, so that's what that was. That naiveness that I have, mm -hmm. um, because I, I'm the type of person where I try to focus on the positives first. Um, and so I've been called naive a few times. It's like, Angie, really? It's like, yeah, what did you see? <laughs> well, we're at the same place. Um, so I, I think that um, that's one of those things where I can say, if I look back and if I had to study some different situations, were there some racial undertones, undertones related to it? Yeah, probably. But at the time, I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. I, I just felt like I was at my, this is my home, this is my school. Mm -hmm. um, on the basketball team, oh my gosh, we were so unified. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, I think that there were maybe only two blacks um, um, or African Americans on the team. Mm -hmm. um, see, Ruby Smith. And yeah, Ruby Smith and myself, we were the only two my mm -hmm. first year. Mm -hmm. um, and, but I didn't feel that. I didn't, I, di I didn't feel that at that time. And so when I think about it now, I was like, you know what, you, there were only two of you. Mm -hmm. And then as time, you know, the next class come in, I think may or a couple more may have come mm -hmm. along. Um, but yeah, we were the only um, two initially, um, but it, it wasn't an issue for me um, because I, again I like to say that I am a people person and, and you know I used to just I'll talk to everybody mm -hmm. and that's the way I, I I was I am like that a little bit but I've grown up and matured a little bit mm -hmm. where I know it's like you, you have to be careful mm -hmm. you, you have to you can't just let everything be out in the open you have to put a wall up and decide when to let it down and um, so forth and so on as I've matured mm -hmm. So uh, tell me about like growing and meeting the team that first fall because you just moved in and they're comforting you already. Yeah, they, they were great. Um, as I said, our Natalie and Natalie, she was a redhead. She was a fireball. She was so funny. Just thinking about her now. Hey, girl, you know, just like she's been knowing, you know, knowing me forever. And it's just like, OK, you know, and then Julia, um, you know, those were the main two that came and. and checked on me and, and I'm assuming just knowing Coach Ag the way and, and just based off of my experience that's the way it was mm -hmm. um, the upperclassmen you took care of the underclassmen mm -hmm. you took them under your wings and you tried to show them how, how to think how things work um, but I, I remember just being very nervous um, because number one during my first year women's basketball was transitioning from playing with the big ball. So we used to play with the same ball that the men played with. Mm -hmm. See, people may not know that. Oh no. my gosh, I'm telling my age. But we used to play with the same size ball. Mm -hmm. And so they, the NCAA changed that where we were now playing with a smaller ball, you know, for different reasons. Some people said so the women can dunk because we could get the rim because I actually could get the rim. Mm -hmm. um, but hands aren't big enough, can't palm the ball and, and so forth and so on. And so um, they changed the ball and um, I remember we used to have what they call open gym and it was it wasn't a scheduled practice but it was just you know you were in there and you just practice and played play pickup and the very first shot I took with that small ball you want to know what it was it was an air ball <laughs> I was so embarrassed. I was mortified. Mm. And I was like, I wanted to crawl up under a rock because I was like, they're going to be like, why did we get her? She's not any good. And everyone's like, why is she here? You know, because the pressure is on because everybody, everybody wants to see what you bring to the table. Why right. is this person on this team? Right. Um, and so I, I remember yeah, that, that was funny. I, I shot an air ball and, and I was just like, oh my goodness. If OMG was out then, I would have said that. Um, but it, you know, but I transitioned, I adjusted mm -hmm. um, to the smaller ball and um, just really my upbringing, as I described my mother, working the way she worked to make sure that we had what we needed. I mean, we still struggled. I mean, we there were times we didn't have food, um, you know, things like that. But at the end of the day, people chipped in to help us. And so that 
um, sense, I guess, of urgency, um, hard work, determination, those things really help me on the court um, in life in general, in the classroom, mm -hmm. um, because all through high school and, and middle school, I was always on a roll. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to get the best grades. Um, and so um, that transferred to basketball. And I just remember I'm going all out. I, I, I'm just going to give you everything I have. I'm leaving it on the court. Mm -hmm. um, and that is what I did. I used to stay at the practice almost every day. Um, because when I came in, I came in as a three, a shooting guard. I would run the baseline, shoot jump shots. And I actually didn't learn how to shoot a jump shot until my junior year mm -hmm. when I went to camp at uh, NC State, KL's basketball camp. Before that, I shot like this. Mm -hmm. No one had ever taken the time <laughs> to show me how to shoot correctly. Right. I went to camp, they showed me how to shoot correctly. Mm -hmm. And then that my junior year is when I actually was shooting a regular jump shot. Mm -hmm. uh, actually won the Little Four MVP that year. Mm -hmm. uh, some great things happened. And so that, you know, helped me, again, decide, you know what? Hard work pays off. I'm not worried about this person. I'm not worried about that person. Focus on what you need to do. Give them everything you have. And if everybody does that, then we can be great together. Mm -hmm. You know, that team thing. And so, I mean, that was something that Coach Agee really emphasized. It was all about team. There were no stars. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I may have, um, you know, as time went on, been the leading scorer or rebounder and all that, but we never had a award ceremony where there was an MVP or most of We never did anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, there, were, there was always a team thing, and I think that that, is what helped us to be, um, you know, one of the best teams that, you know, have come through here. Mm -hmm. uh, going to the Final Four uh, my junior year. Mm -hmm. um, again, Coach Agee was phenomenal mm -hmm. in building that team camaraderie that um, it's not about you, um, it's all about us mm -hmm. as a unit. And so um, I believe that. Um, that's why we were so successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk more about Coach Ag because that's a pivotal relationship. Oh my gosh! Oh, I'm not supposed to hit that button. <laughs> You're fine. I, 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 Lynn Ag. She just she will always hold a very special place in my heart, and I say that because um, she was like a second mother um, to not only me but so many of the girls because. She wanted to expose us to things that most of us or some of us had never been exposed to. Um, I, I remember we would actually, you know, all of our trips and our games, there was a purpose behind it. Yes, we were going to play basketball, but she made sure that there was an educational component to it, that there was a cultural experience for us. Um, especially, you know, here I am, this, you know, little project kid hadn't been, you know, been to Maryland. Um, to visit a father, but pretty much it hadn't been, you know, much of anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and so she really created those real world experiences or some cultural experiences that we I hadn't experienced before. Um, she always made sure that we ate in nice restaurants uh, where you had the nice place um, settings and mm -hmm. table settings and things. So little things that as a team, we'd be like, wow, we're eating at a nice restaurant. You know, we, you know, as the players, we would say stuff like, the orange juice was $2.50 yeah, versus the 99 cents that you're used to drinking. Mm -hmm. or, so we, we really appreciated those little things. Mm -hmm. um, it was almost like, you know, we're going on a trip. And by the way, we're going to play a basketball game while we're there. Or we're going to play a couple of games while we're there. But we're going to go to Graceland. We're going to go to Disney World. We're going to go to Disneyland. We're going to go to this museum. We're going to go to that, you know. And so that is really what made me, and I speak for myself, help me to give a great appreciation for her as not the coach, but as like a second mother, someone that was implanting or planting seeds beyond the basketball court. Mm -hmm. 
and to this day, I mean, Lynn, and you know, she knows that I love her dearly. Um, that she is, she has been and was like a surrogate mother. Um, and my mom really appreciates and respects her, and is thankful for what she was able to do for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so. She's just a phenomenal person, um, beyond being a phenomenal coach, very intelligent, um, knew the game, um, had a strong desire for young people. You could tell that, that the, the relationship piece was very important to her. Um, all she wanted you to do was just give her your absolute best and <clears throat> um, to respect, you know, show respect, be responsible. Um, so those are the things that, that, that come to mind when I think of Lynn. Um, she was, my, my, my years with her and with the women's basketball program were some of the best years of my life uh, because I, I experienced my first time flying mm -hmm. uh, with Coach A.G. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, I went to Graceland with the women's basketball team, both Disney World and Disneyland mm -hmm. with Coach A.G., the aquarium with Coach A.G., um, just so many things. Um, and so I'm very appreciative of what she was able to contribute to my um, my life, my experiences, because that has helped to shape me. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where you say you want to pay it forward. It's like somebody does something for you. It's like you keep that cycle going. Mm -hmm. um, and so with you know the things that my mother instilled in me and then my experiences um, here at the university with women's basketball um, and beyond the basketball. I mean, I could talk about that also, but mm -hmm. um, those things really help to shape who I am. Mm -hmm. So still staying on the basketball, what, um, what do you remember about the first season? Season here at UNCG? Well, the first season I remember um, we were playing in part Pit Packer. I actually have um, a piece of that. Can we get it? Excuse me. <laughs> this is a part of the floor wow. from part Pit Packer. This is where we used to play. And so that was, they had some of these made, and that one was given to me by. Um, you know, by Jaina Henderson. Um, but I remember the very first game where I didn't start. Okay? However, I remember that I was putting the game very early, maybe with maybe 18, because I was, you know, as a freshman, maybe 18, you know, it was 20 minute halves. And mm -hmm. I think by the 18 minute mark or 17 minute mark, I was in the game. And if memory serves me correctly, I didn't come out. And so from that game forward, I st the next game forward, I started mm -hmm. my entire career. Mm -hmm. And I just remember being, I, when I think about the game, it's like you're in a zone. You're scared to death, but you're just gonna play hard. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I remember about that game. I don't remember my exact stats, mm -hmm. but obviously, I must have done pretty well for her to say you're starting from now on. Yeah. Um, and because I don't, I don't recall. I don't think that she had ever started a freshman before. Mm -hmm. um, I may be wrong about that, but I don't think she had. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think I may have been one of the first times she decided, hmm, we're gonna start this freshman. <laughs> um, and I, I just remember just running up and down the court and just feeling free feeling proud to have on that uniform um, because I felt, I don't know, it's just, you know, when I, while I'm sitting here thinking about it, it's just really um, interesting to, to, to reminisce and to actually try to picture and reflect. That's why I keep looking up because I'm mm -hmm. like thinking about and, and seeing myself on the court and just that whole first college game experience, your family in the stands, oh gosh, my family, I would have so many people at the <laughs> games, I mean, every game, right. even when we traveled, most of the time, my family traveled, they traveled, we played at Christopher Newport, um, Virginia Beach, mm -hmm. you know, Christopher, I mean, Newport News, Virginia, and my family traveled in the snow to come see me play. <laughs> because I wanted them to be there, right. and they did. <laughs> and so um, 
it, it, we always had a great fan base. <laughs> it, that's why they called it Park Pit Packer, mm -hmm. and it was always packed, and it, the, it was so loud. I mean, and it was small, right. but nonetheless, it was a great feeling. It was great to play <laughs> in front of the people mm -hmm. in, in Park Gym. And then how did it feel to be a student athlete? Because you're still a freshman. You're still getting used mm -hmm, to being mm -hmm. in a new place. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. My freshman year academically was horrible. My <laughs> first semester, I was stunned. Yeah. I remember getting my report card, the, you know, at the first semester, and I thought it was wrong. I was like, that, that's not right. I went to the professor because I... I think it was, was it an economics class, I believe? And I had I had a B in there going to the exam. Well, I ended up getting a D or an F. I think it was a D. And I was like, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. I went to her and I was like, well, I had a B. What? And she's like, well, you didn't do well on your exam. I was like, how could I not do well? I studied for, I, I studied, I, I did, mm -hmm. I knew it. Mm -hmm. I knew the stuff and like, you didn't do well on your exam. I cried. I went to Coach AG. I cried and cried. I was like, I've never seen grades like this before because I was so used to always having an honor roll. Right. Um, and she, she said, Angie, she was like, this is normal. Sometimes freshmen, their first semester is not their best. We're sure you're going to be okay. We're going to connect you with the, you know, resources and all this. And and so. From that point on, you know, it got better. My grades went up by the end of my freshman year. But from following that, I went to summer school every summer, took some courses, um, just so I wouldn't have too many courses while basketball season was on. Mm -hmm. And so I would try to take two or three during the summer mm -hmm. so I would not go over 12 to 15 hours during basketball season because you end up missing classes sometimes. Right. And so, um, but after that, I maintained above a 3.0. Um, you know, when I graduated, my GPA was above a 3.0, mm -hmm. um, and that was, you know, good considering playing basketball, um, looking at how I would miss class sometimes, especially yeah. my junior year when we went to the Final Four. Mm -hmm. We literally were leaving on Wednesday, come back on Sunday, mm -hmm. left on Wednesday, come back on Sunday, and we did that for several weeks. Right. Um, and so trying to maintain that schedule was complicated. Um, it was challenging, mm -hmm. um, but I was able to do so. Did you declare a major when you came in? Mm -hmm. um, I would, initially, it was early childhood education. Mm -hmm. um, I always knew I wanted to work with kids. Right. Um, and so um, started out with early childhood education. Mm -hmm. And then um, UNCG went through a um, shifting some of their majors. And so then it became, um, I shifted from early childhood, or I made early childhood education a minor, and I made, um, what is it, education. What was it? What was it called? I'm thinking about my masters. Um, K six, K six education is my um, is my major, mm -hmm. and then with the early childhood uh, minor is what I ended up doing. Um, did you take education courses when you first came in, or was it were you no, doing? No, I think um, if memory serves me correctly, it was those base courses: your psychology, your sociology, mm -hmm. your biology. Ooh, I hated biology, um, but I took. At that time, my advisor had me sign up for biology 101, which was really biology um, for biology majors. Right. And I was in there with the lab and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I did not do well, needless least to say. Sure. And so um, they put me in Biology 105, which is the one I should have been in to begin with. Mm -hmm. And I did fine in there. And I actually, amazingly, did really well in physics. I, I mean, I was stunned. I didn't care for chemistry that much, but I did. Um, I did well enough. I think, you know, got a B. Um, or, yeah, I think it was a B in those classes. But initially... No, that was, I did not like it. Makes a bit of a sense thinking about the connection to math, though, because mm -hmm. a lot of physics right. is just. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Makes a lot of sense. It, it did. Um, I remember taking um, physical fitness. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was, I don't know what it's called now, but I think it was called fitness, physical fitness for life. Um, I took that and I took, um, you know, the history classes and um, a lot of child development um <laughs> economic classes, mm -hmm. just things that were of interest, 
required, but then any of my electives, it, it needed to be something that I had an interest in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any um, notable classes your first year going in? My first year, any notable classes? Um, I can't think of any that stand out, but I will say one summer I took um, a history class under Dr. Rosenblum, I think was his name, and he really made me enjoy history on a different level. I don't know what it was, mm -hmm. but I thoroughly enjoyed that class. I, I got an A in it, mm -hmm. and then um, Dr. Calhoun, was he history or he was an education? I don't remember, but he was another professor that stands out mm -hmm. um, that I remember enjoying um, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. um, and then Dr. Karen King, she was in health, mm -hmm. um, and she was a major supporter of, of um, you know, women's basketball. And I remember taking her class. I think this was may have been a um, required course, a methods course mm -hmm. um, for health. And uh, I remember during the time when we were, I think it was my junior year, with her, she, um, we had been, it was doing exams and, you know, I'm going to class, leaving class, going to practice, doing work, going just that routine. And there were a lot of projects that were due, um, studying for exams. And I remember one week during this, you know, exam, I'm sure it was exam week, I literally didn't get any sleep. I wasn't going to sleep. Mm -hmm. And so her project was due. And I remember I had gone to practice, come back to the room, stayed up all night, going to, pr you know, just, and I slept, her, her class was at eight o'clock. And I was like, she called me. She said, Angie Pope, you better get your butt in class now. And I was like, okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. So I got dressed really quickly and I went and I just, when I got there, I I put the project on and I just cried. Mm. I was like, I'm so tired. <laughs> I was like, I'm just so tired. Mm -hmm. And um, and so you know, she talked to me and she called me down. I was like, I'm not getting any sleep. I'm just going to practice the class and eating and practice the class. And I was like, I'm tired, I want to go to sleep. And, and so, you know, she helped me through that. But I do remember that. She called and woke me and I woke up like, what time is it? You know, and she was like, you're late. I was like, oh my gosh, she left her class to call me. But to me, that meant, I said, she really cared. Right. She really cared and um, I, I believe she, she felt like she had to do that. It's like, and, and I would say knowing Karen, she probably called everybody that wasn't there mm -hmm. to say, I'm gonna give everybody a shot. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, I would like to think that she did it because she wanted to make sure, she didn't want to have to give me an F for not bringing my project. Because there was no exception. If you didn't turn it in, mm -hmm. that was it. Right. It was due when it was due. Right. And so if I hadn't turned that project in, I would have been done. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I, I always remembered her for that. Mm. I can see Karen's face just as clear right now. <laughs> just Angie Polk, you know, girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think we're going to switch into sophomore year, unless there's anything else freshman that you wish I had. Well, you know, I, you know, the, a lot of the stuff that I've been telling you is really a little bit of a combination of everything. Right. Because, you know, to, I can't single out, you know, year by year. Okay. It's just a hodgepodge okay. of things. Okay. Okay. Um, as far as basketball is concerned, I would say I do remember after my freshman year, because, you know, I would make all tournament teams mm -hmm. and all this stuff, discovering or having an aha moment that you're pretty good. Mm -hmm. You didn't know you were good. Mm -hmm. But Coach A.G., because Coach A.G. and Carol they were able to pull everything out. They tapped into all of my talent. Um, they saw it and they utilized them. You know, utilized it um, to their advantage or to the team's advantage. Or um, and so that's what I, I I can say after my freshman year. I, I didn't get the big head or anything like that, but it was just like, wow, all I ever needed was somebody to show me. And I go back to. 
when I didn't know how to do a layup, mm -hmm. somebody took the time to show me how to do it. You show me how to do it, I'm going to be good at it. Right. I got good at layups. <laughs> then, you know, coming into college basketball, okay, we're going to make you a post player. I wasn't a post player. Show me how to do it. Mm -hmm. They showed me how to do it. I eventually became an All-American. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that was the routine. It's like, if you show Angie how to do it, she's going to be good at it. She's going to perfect it. And, and that's just who I am. And that comes again. I take everything back to my mother. Mm -hmm. Watching my mother work the way that she worked, doing everything she could to give us her best. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I work the way that I work. I mean, I work very long hours just like my mom. I've spent the night in my office multiple times, um, meeting deadlines, getting things done. Um, but again, you show me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to perfect it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what happened because I wasn't a post player. Mm -hmm. But I stayed after every day and worked on becoming a post player. Showing Carol, showing me post moves, up and under, baby hook. We used to watch video together. She's like, Angie, got some video. Sit there, watch it, then let's go try it. Mm -hmm. And we would go out and we would try it. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that's really what helped to develop my game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I just want to shift then into when you're no longer a freshman then, when you're just like, then you're seeing your freshman players come in, what is, and being a part of a team in that slightly different sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to get a feel of that. Well, I think, you know, as the upperclassmen start to graduate, right. you start to realize, oh, it's your turn. Mm -hmm. And so it's one of those things where you want to model appropriate behavior. You want them to see what's acceptable, what is okay um, when it comes to being a Spartan, being a part of being affiliated with USCG Women's Basketball. And I took a real special pride in that. Um, number one, I wanted, I felt a sense of loyalty to not only the university, but to Coach A.G. and to Carol. Um, because of them believing in me, giving me a chance um, to shine, if you will, giving me a chance to get an education, um, giving me a chance to be the first to graduate or to go to a college and possibly graduate with a degree. Mm -hmm. um, because I am the first one in my family to go to college and actually graduate with a four-year degree. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm very appreciative of that um, because of Coach A.G. Um, and, and Carol and the university. I mm -hmm. mean, people jokely, jokingly um, say, I believe blue and gold, and I do, um, because I, I feel such a sense of loyalty um, to the university. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate everything that it has brought to my life. And basketball was just a, a vehicle or a tool to help to get me to where I am now. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing that um, I think about, and, and I'm, I think about specific when I start talking about the university, because it was past just the basketball. Of course. Um, Nelson Bob was the athletic director at the time. Um, Jim Allen, I think he was in student affairs. I mean, there were some people um, that were so supportive of us, and they made sure that we, number one, were taken care of, not only on the court, but in the classroom. There was this thing um, that we truly were students first, athlete second. Um, athletics had a program where um, you had to go to the library every Sunday night for study hall. You, you just had to go. Um, I believe it may have been for, um, definitely for all underclassmen, and then if there were any upperclassmen that perhaps were struggling or, or didn't you know, have a certain GPA, they were required to be in attendance. Um, Carol, um, who was the assistant coach at the time, she was on it. She kept up with our grades, she called us in, she was so, I mean, she did so much um, as an assistant coach to make sure that 
we were graduating, that everybody was graduating. And I don't know what our graduation percentage was, but I, I, if I were a betting woman, I'm sure that it was probably one of the top um, for athletics, mm -hmm. um, if not the highest, but definitely among the top, you know, two or three sports. Sure. Mm -hmm. And um, around this time is when you you start getting entered into tournaments uh -huh. and all star stuff. So I want to switch over to you getting that aha moment. Well, every every year mm -hmm. in the end, you know, even at the end of freshman year, mm -hmm. you played. We played in the Dixie Conference tournament. Mm -hmm. Well. We always won, and we, you know, and I would make the all conference team. Whether it was, I think, my freshman year, I may have, it may have been the second team all conference. Mm -hmm. um, and I just remember, you know, it's like this is cool. You know, I'm playing basketball, and it's it was cool to see, you know, to watch me blossom mm -hmm. to know that you weren't highly recruited when you were in high school but once you got to college once given the chance mm -hmm. once you show me mm -hmm. just show me yeah I'm gonna make something happen yeah because I'm gonna give you everything that I have mm -hmm. I do the same thing in this it, at the middle college mm -hmm. once you show me it's on. Mm -hmm. Something's gonna happen. Something. My pastor said this. He said, "Everything you touch." I, I, he didn't use the term "turns into gold," but he says, "I think he did." He was introducing me. He said, "This." You know, he was introducing me for speaking or something, and and he said, "Everything she puts her hands on, it prospers. It, it turns into gold. It ends up being something great." And. I, I, I take credit, but I can't say I take credit alone. Sure. Um, it has so much to do with my upbringing, my mother and her hard work, um, Lynn Agee, you know, and far and foremost, God. Um, just having that faith and relationship with him and knowing that he can make all things possible. And so just those things together is a perfect recipe for uh, overcoming any obstacles, overcoming any challenges that you may have. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I look at um, look at those things and, and I just shake my head and say, yeah, that, that, that's it. That's it. it it's, it's, it's really um, it's really interesting sitting here talking to you. It's just like, show me and I'm going to make something happen. Mm -hmm. So um, the other question I have is when you got named, when you were named first team All-American. Oh, yeah. Let's get into that. <laughs> well, um, that was surreal. Um, I just remember thinking, wow. Because um, I would get the other accolades and um, all conference, you know, because my freshman year was first, second team. I think from that that point on, second team, it was all. I mean, second year on, it was always first team all conference, then all regional, all set, all this, all this. And I'm just like, wow, mm -hmm. you know, it was one of those things. I never, I never got the big head. I never became, you know, stick my chest out that that person. Um, but when I was named All American, I I was just like. What? You're one of the best in America? <laughs> and it was just, it was surreal. I mean, but it, there was a sense of pride. Mm -hmm. And um, I just remember thinking about my mom mm -hmm. and how proud I was making her. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like you want to say, Mom, see all your hard work is paying off. Um, and not, you know, just from my perspective, but my other siblings doing with it. But I, I just felt like, this was something that she could be proud of um, because her baby girl was doing all that, working hard, and this is what she has to show for it. Her hard work is paying off. Your hard work is paid off. Um, and so um, I, I, do, I just remember being in disbelief um, that I had been selected um, as an All-American, um, but being very proud, mm -hmm. very proud, and thinking back to uh, saying like all those schools mm -hmm. that didn't 
you know, give me the time of the day because I wasn't, quote unquote, the star at the time. Mm -hmm. um, look what you could have had. But no, I'm glad that I ended up being where I am. Mm -hmm. And so we have to talk about junior year when, uh, when we make it. Yeah, junior year is when everything, uh, a lot happened my junior year. Mm -hmm. um, that was, you know, obviously the year that we went to the Final Four. It was mm -hmm. the year I was selected all um, as an All-American. Mm -hmm. And that was um, the year that we beat Russ, Mississippi. Because that, that was, Russ was all, and I don't, was that my sophomore year or my... See, Donna Sneed was on the team, so it must have been my soft. I think it was either my sophomore or my junior year. Okay. And um, sh it was like we couldn't, UNCG, before I even came, always had a hard time getting past Rust, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And I remember we were down, I think we were down by one. And Lynn called a timeout, and she said, get the ball in to Angie. And, and and that was you know she typically it was like get the ball into Angie and then sometimes it may have been you know but typically it was get the ball into Angie and I remember I can see it I can see it I can see it our bench is over here okay Donna comes around and I'm posting up I'll, I'm getting ready to post up but Donna comes around and post um, and I'm post up and she bounced past the ball into me. And I get it, drop step, and we win the game. And that was so huge. Mm -hmm. That that was huge. Um, and that was when we were we were on our way. It's like okay, mm -hmm. we've gotten past Russ. Mm -hmm. Oh, we are going to win this thing. Right. We, we were we were going to win it. Yeah. Um, and so we we traveled to some of everywhere. And you know, see, I had never traveled to these places. I was every week just about flying somewhere mm -hmm. um, and I remember one of the most interesting um, things during that time was when we went to I think it was Idaho I'm oh, sorry but <laughs> it was we were in the hotel and I, I don't know if kid these kids were on a field trip I don't I don't recall the details but one of the little girls it was you know Caucasian girls um, all Caucasian Caucasian and see how many blacks were on it. Maybe there were three blacks at the time. But the little girl says, look, mommy, there's a black person. So it was just like, okay. <laughs> you know, that was really interesting. Sure. You know, um, and so it's like one of those things you go like, she's never seen a black person. You know, but that we were in Idaho, right? Um, and so um, I, I just remember that um, they're looking like like you're an alien, or you're just like, wow, <laughs> they do exist, right. you know, type thing. Um, so, but that that was one of the interesting things there. Um, I remember going to Kentucky. I think we were playing, as the other team said, uh, what did they say, Centra. Um, but it was Center, mm -hmm. um, Center College. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, who else did we play? I mean, we played so many. I, mm -hmm. I can't remember all of them, but I do remember um, some of those trips. And, and finally, when we got to the Final Four, mm -hmm. it was in Fargo, North Dakota. <laughs> flat, flat, flat. You could, as we were getting off the plane, you could look and you could see everything. <laughs> and it was, there was snow on the ground. Um, and... I just remembered that it was really cold, mm -hmm. you know, and so we went to Fargo. Um, the other teams were Maine, and well, we played. It was Concordia, Maine, and what was the other team? I don't remember the other team. I don't remember the other team. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, we stepped out on that court. And they had all giants. I was the post player. Mm -hmm. I here I am five nine. Right, and that's stretching it. Yeah, <laughs> they had six two. Everybody was it was it was the land of the giants. <laughs> and I kid you not, every time I got the ball, I mean, because the scouting report talked a lot about me and you know the other players, but that I was supposedly the strongest player on the team or 
I, they needed to stop me in order to win. Mm -hmm. And they did. <laughs> they double team, tri they, I could not get a shot off. I was mortified. I mean, they smothered me. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't remember, I think I may have scored nine points in that game. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I looked around a lot that game. I couldn't get a shot off. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it, they were they were bigger than I was, which I was used to playing against larger players. Mm -hmm. That wasn't norm. I mean, no, um, unusual um, because you know, five eight, five nine as a post player, you know, you're kind of short. Mm -hmm. um, but I could score. I mean, I, I usually could score. Mm -hmm. um, but when you had several six footers, mm -hmm. and as soon as you got the ball. It was just like this mm -hmm. all around me. So I was always doing this, looking, trying to, it's like, somebody come get the ball. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just yeah. trying to get rid of it. Yeah. Um, and, and that game, I, I, I felt like I had let my team down. I felt so badly mm -hmm. after that game because I felt um, that I, 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 didn't, I didn't step up the way I needed to. I tried, but mm -hmm. it just, they wouldn't, I couldn't get a shot off. Mm -hmm. um, other players, you know, they, they did their part, they tried, um, but we just didn't have enough. In order for us to win, everybody had to do what they had always done. Mm -hmm. And see, they put a stop to my usual contribution. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, you know, yeah, it was horrible. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 it took me a while to get over that. Mm -hmm. But the next, get, next day, the mm -hmm. next game, mm -hmm. oh, it was on, we mm -hmm. won. Yeah. I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. We are not going out here in fourth place. We're going out in third place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We lost. Let's let's move past it for tonight. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we won. I think that game. I think I may have had sixteen points. But and, and see, that was the norm with us. Mm -hmm. That's what I loved about us. Mm -hmm. It was it was pretty equal. You know, every now and then, yes, I would score. I mean, I had several games in the thirties. Mm -hmm. um, you know, thirty two. I think my most the most. I think it was 35, no, 33, 35. Had a couple games like that, 32, 30, 28, 29. You know, a lot of games like that. Um, but for the most part, we had equal scoring. Um, you know, when I, when I say equal scoring, I may have been at 15 points a, um, a game or somebody else may have been at 11 or mm -hmm. 10. Uh, it wasn't just... Angie Pogue is averaging 25 points and everybody else is averaging four or five points. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was a total team effort. Mm -hmm. um, my strength was also my rebounding. Mm -hmm. That I love rebounding. And so um, a lot of people don't know that I also have over a thousand rebounds. Mm -hmm. And I think there's only two athletes, two women's basketball players to ever do a thousand points plus a thousand rebounds. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was my thing. And the other thing that it was stealing, I had a lot of steals. I love defense mm -hmm. um, and making things happen. I love the 1-3-1. The one, one. I love the 1-3-1 one, one matchup. And that's I was the back of it where it was like you had to anticipate the pass. And so I would get a lot of steals you know, off of that. We had a lot of fast breaks. I mean, those were the keys to our success. It was like we were going to run you off the floor. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes I would get a rebound and I would shoot past people and get down the floor and I got a layup I mean because that, that was just you know that drive that mm -hmm. determination to mm -hmm. just score and just win and mm -hmm. just uh, just get excited thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> so I want to back up just a little bit because this mm -hmm. was because this was the first time UNCG had gone to the final four no it was the well, second. second time. Mm -hmm. That's one. Mm -hmm. That's on me. Yeah. But I wanted to just ask about just like campus atmosphere when you're going there, because that's still just so huge. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. Um, I'm trying to think. Did we go to do something in Cone Ballroom? The, the, the interesting thing about the Final Four mm -hmm. is it's almost it's the worst possible time because it's usually spring break, right. and so you don't have as much of the support that you would want. Sure. But you have some, and see. Um, the cheerleading, the cheerleaders went with us. Mm -hmm. We had some great cheerleaders. We have great cheerleaders now, but those cheerleaders, they were before their time. Mm -hmm. They were really good, and they, the crowd, they would get the crowd in there. I mean, they, they did such an awesome job, but the cheerleading squad went with us. Um, and then um, different departments, you know, Jim Allen and Nelson and um, 
uh, the Harrelsons, I mean, just different people across campus, they supported us. And then we had a little crew um, of fans that had t-shirts made with, you know, with different players' numbers on it, had a U on the front, and then, you know, our number on the back, and just a little, so we had a little fan base that, that followed us right. um, and to support us. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, it's not, again, when we were doing that, mm -hmm. uh, it was always spring break, so right. you didn't have as many mm -hmm. as you would like to have had, but we, we had great support. Mm -hmm. We did. We yeah. did. We really did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we got to talk about you, all-time leading scorer. Yes. Mm -hmm. That, um, I remember a couple of things. We were at Christopher Newport, and um, we, um, I had, I think, 32 points that game, and Lynn had taken me out. And then our AD at the time, Ty Buckner, he said something about, I don't know if he said it after the game, but I remember there being a conversation about, you should have left her in there and let her break the, um, the scoring record per game. Um, but, you know, for me, I didn't really care about that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's I like for things to just happen. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't necessarily care to plan out breaking the record, if you know what I mean. Okay. Um, I didn't know that I was breaking the record um, until it was brought to my attention when I was doing an interview. Mm -hmm. Because Lynn wasn't, again, because of who she was, she didn't, it wasn't about that. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, that's the way I am. Mm -hmm. And I was being interviewed about playing Greensboro College, I think it was. And they said, how does it feel to be 28 points away from breaking the scoring record? And I'm like, I didn't know it was 28 points away from the scoring <laughs> record, you know. So that put pressure on me, and obviously I didn't break the record the next game. Right. You know, but I probably, I think I was like, if they hadn't said anything, I probably would have broken the record that particular game. Mm -hmm. But because they put, you know, it was like, how do you feel? It's like, I didn't know I was about to break the record. I'm like, I don't feel any one particular way. Mm -hmm. uh, my thing is, I just want to go out here and play. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to play hard when I do it. Mm -hmm. So That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to not really like end because we're not going to stop talking about basketball. Okay. But it is. But I think it's important to us for reflect at this point about just being a part of this tradition of women's sports at UNCG. Mm -hmm. So do you have any reflections upon that at this point? Um, about, you know, rephrase the question again. So just thinking, thinking yeah, yeah, sure. Just, um, thinking about just the history of women's sports here mm -hmm. at UNCG, we're from a women's college, but we always had such a very big sports tradition. Mm -hmm. And how does it feel to be a part of that? Mm. It actually, it feels, it's an honor. Mm -hmm. It's an honor um, because being a, a couple of reasons. Women's, this used to be the women's college. And I'm happy and, and it's great that it, you know, transitioned to a co-ed college, not a problem or mm -hmm. anything. But I think it's important that the, that women's history for the women's component, mm -hmm. um, the female component of it, um, that we preserve um, that history before it became co-ed. Mm -hmm. And that once it did become co-ed, that we don't lose sight of it, of uh, the continuing contributions that women are making to the university, the sports, um, and things of that nature. And so um, I, I think about, you know, when you said that, what came, for some reason, you know, the picture of the Minerva came up, um, you know, the female. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I know the university is in you know, transitioning with the um, logo, playing around with that. Um, oh, you didn't know that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you should put that part in there. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, you know, you don't yeah. have to. Yeah, that, that, that's fine. Okay. Um, but um, it just made me think about that. And for me, being an African American woman, I think that that is huge given 
the history because you know you had UNCG or women's college then you had A&T mm -hmm. and so um, you know because of segregation and all that for me to be the first um, student athlete period for any sport for male or female to have their jersey retired mm -hmm. that's special in itself mm -hmm. You know, not 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 just because um, I am a female, um, not just because I'm an athlete, but because I'm an African American female, and so that is an important part of the history for the university. I think that you know the transition that the university has made um, to integrating um, and and. and creating a culture, a diverse culture, and unifying different cultures, and um, those types of things I think is, is very important for the history. And to be able to be a part of that is, um, is really special. Um, again, it's one of those things when, when all of that was happening, um, it was like, what? You gonna do what? <laughs> like, yeah, yours is the first one in the school's history. I remember being told, and I remember being told um, as a, I was a grad assistant because mm -hmm. I had to do my student teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and I was feeling, I was going through depression um, or withdrawal. Let's not say depression, I don't want to use that term lightly. But I was going through withdrawal from no longer playing basketball. Mm -hmm. I, I, I felt a loss. I was hurting. Mm -hmm. I, I missed it so. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was finishing my um, student teaching because again, I couldn't do it and play basketball because I was on the road. I was like, you can't get all your hours in and stuff. And um, I remember Lynn telling me, because she, she could tell, I was like, it's just like, I don't matter anymore. And you know, I don't know what to do. And she's like, Angie, she said, you're something along the lines, and I'm paraphrasing of your contributions to this university will never be forgotten or something, you know, basically we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And she said, in fact, she said, I wasn't going to tell you this, but your jersey is being retired at the game on Saturday. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, she's like, yes, your jersey is being retired. It's the first one in the school's hit. And I was just like, what? You know, all I could say, what? And I just started crying, mm -hmm. and she hugged. We hugged and embraced and everything. It was like, oh, I'm sorry, you know. Um, but I just remember her, remember that conversation. I remember the feelings that I was having. I didn't know what to do because mm -hmm. I had become, basketball and this university had become so much a part of who I was. Mm -hmm. It became my identity. Mm -hmm. And I... Um, I felt such a sense of loyalty, and I didn't want to leave it. I did not want to leave this university. I did not want to leave basketball. I did not, I just wanted to stay here. Mm -hmm. I, I did, because I was so appreciative. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the love that I have in my heart for the university and for what it's done, it, it's just, I can't, it's hard to put it into words. Um, but I, I, I truly, um, appreciate everything and, and so um, that's what I was dealing with at that moment because mm -hmm. I was like it's going to be over I'm going to be done then what and then she was like no you'll always be a part of it and as a matter of fact we're going to show you how much we appreciate what you've done mm -hmm. and and they had invited my family my student teacher everybody and I was just like oh man I messed up their surprise <laughs> <laughs> I did. I was like, I messed up their surprise. I said, I guess she's like, I'm not gonna torture her anymore. Let me, let me. I gotta tell her something, otherwise yeah. she's gonna lose her mind. Right. <laughs> so, but yes, it was. It, it, it was a tough. It was a tough time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that that was my experience when um, I found out about my jersey being retired, and and I I, I didn't even know. Um, like a lot of the records that I, I broke, I didn't know that I had broken them. Mm -hmm. And again, that that's I like to just do what I'm supposed to do, and what comes along, it comes along. Mm -hmm. It's like you know what, 
you did a really good job at A, B, C, and D. As a result, this is what happened. Not, um, if you do this, you do this. You know, now that motivates me also, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but at the same time, I'm the type of person, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to, I'm going to go all out and I'm going to give you everything that I have and then some. And then whatever happens as a result of that, that's what happens. You will never be able to say that Angie Polk, Angie Polk Jones went halfway or didn't give you her all. Mm -hmm. Whatever I do, I always give him my all. Mm -hmm. Always give him my all. That's just the way I was raised. So I want to shift into the the education bit because mm -hmm. we we've we've done a bit about basketball and I want to get to because you were a student athlete still. Right. Right. So um, when do you, uh, when did you start taking education classes? Like the sophomore year, probably. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to. I think my mm, I started. I did an in yes. I didn't, um, they called it a practicum, mm -hmm. where I had to do 10 hours, and I did it at Moorhead Elementary School. Mm -hmm. um, the teacher was Miss Smouse, I remember her, and I remember having to do just 10 hours um, and working with students over there, mm -hmm. um, and that was my sophomore year, and then um, the junior year, or was that my junior year? We didn't get, I don't think I did, I think that was all I did before I actually did my student teaching. Okay. I did my student teaching at um, Oak Ridge Elementary mm -hmm. with Miss Raker. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, oh gosh, I love that. That was, that was, uh, I loved, I really enjoyed that. I mean, um, to actually get in there and I just, I remember I had a um, spiral notebook or a spiral tablet that I would literally script out everything I was going to say, everything I was going to do. I mean, and I remember walking around just because it was like, well, do it until you get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And I mean, I, I, I enjoyed it. I did. I perfected that thing. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be good at this. <laughs> and, um, you know, really enjoyed it. And I knew, yeah, this is what I'm meant to do. Mm hmm do you have any um, proudest accomplishments in learning about uh, K th K six K through six? Yes. K six. Yes. Yeah. I, I I would say, actually, learning how to connect with students, mm -hmm. learning how to deliver instruction appropriately, mm -hmm. um, learning how to meet the needs of individual students. Um, of course, I didn't learn all of this overnight, sure. but over the, you know, as time progressed, um, definitely having a lot of aha moments. I um, mean, even now as a principal, I'm trying to instill that in teachers, especially beginning teachers, and trying to get them to see, you know, you can't do the same thing for all kids. You know, I, I feel like I was... I don't want to say before my time, but I got that. Mm -hmm. I got that early on. Mm -hmm. I, I was able to get, get you know what, you got to try different things um, because everybody's not going to learn by you just sitting here reading to them. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have to do some um, manipulatives, you, you know, to reach the kinesthetic learner, um, the auditory learner, mm -hmm. the visual learner. You've got to tap into all of those things in order to reach all of those kids because some kids may be mostly one, mostly the other, and then some are going to be a combination. Mm -hmm. And so if you, when you're teaching, if you use all three within your lessons, then you're covered. You're mm -hmm. going to cover everything. Right. Um, and so that was one of those things that, um, that I got early on. Um, once I started teaching mm -hmm. that, okay, relationships, relationships, connecting with students, figuring out how they learn best. Um, and, you know, as a result, I ended up becoming an EC teacher also. Mm -hmm. um, and teaching kids with learning disabilities mm -hmm. because I felt a connection with them. Even when I was teaching regular classes, um, those kids that struggled, mm -hmm. I was able to reach them in my class. And so when I left teaching after, was it eight years? I think it was eight years, eight or ten years. After I left teaching and when I came back in, I was like, I want to do EC. I mm -hmm. want to work with kids with learning disabilities. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. Right. Um, and I did that for five years. Mm -hmm. um, 
So, but yeah, I would say that, that those are the things that um, along the way that are my proudest moments um, with uh, K-6. Mm-hmm. Um, education is, is basically the, the connections, relationships with the students and meeting their individual needs. Mm-hmm. And then I've got some couple of questions just about uh, UNCG. Um, what, how did you feel about living on campus? Oh, I loved it. Yeah? <laughs> I loved it. You could get me out of the door. I would stay here for holidays. Mm-hmm. I would be the last one to leave. You hear me? Yeah. I would stay in there until they'd be like, okay, gotta go. Uh, I would not leave because number one it it was teaching me more responsibility Mm -hmm. you know i felt sort of grown being on my own and just having your own space not having anybody to answer to Mm -hmm. you know so i stayed here until the absolute (laughs) last minute it 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 is so funny people like you live right here in Greensboro. Why are you here? It's like, because I can. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't want to go back home yet because then when I go home, I'm going to have to answer to my mom. Mm-hmm. I have to tell her everywhere I go. And I have, I'm not used to that. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got used to doing what I want to do. Right. But, you know, so, no, I love living in the dorms. I love just, you know, rolling out of the um, dorm room because by my junior and senior year, I was in gray. Mm-hmm. And so the cafeteria was right across, you know, just roll on out, walk across the street, get your food, mm-hmm. and come back, you know, on the weekends or what have you. Mm-hmm. Do you remember any uh, traditions over your time at UNCG as a student? I remember when it, you know, the few times that it did snow, it was like, gotta go get a cafeteria and get a tray, you know, to go sledding, mm-hmm. you know, so um, did that. Uh, that's really the biggest one, and the, uh, the rock, mm-hmm. um, rubbing, you know, Think about the Apollo <laughs> rubbing the rock, mm-hmm. but just you know, painting of the rock. Mm-hmm. And it's like I didn't get it. It was like, oh, okay, different organizations, announcements, and all that stuff. So the rock has been here forever, right? Um, but those were the main ones that you know. And I, I later found out, and I was like, Did they have this tradition when I was here was about putting an apple on the, on the Minerva mm-hmm. over by EUC during yeah. exams. I was like. I must have missed that because I never put an apple out there. Um, but those would be the main ones that, mm-hmm. I, that I remember. Mm-hmm. Any other uh, social or academic events that stand out in your mind? I didn't do much. Okay. I, I literally, I went to class, I went to practice, Okay. and I went to the cafeteria. Okay. That was about the extent of what I did. That still is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot because I, I, I was very focused. Mm-hmm. I, um, I didn't party. I didn't. I didn't care for that. I, I've, I've never been a partier. Um, uh, you know, every now and then the team would have something at like Julia's apartment or something, and I would go to it, and, and, and it was always funny. They would always call me the square. Um, Beth, Durrell, and I, we would we, be two peas in a pod. It's like, got a Sprite, Angie? <laughs> you know, it was like, we'd drink our Sprite, mm-hmm. and we'd have just as much fun. It's like, mm-hmm. we don't need alcohol to have fun, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but yeah, so we, uh, I, I didn't. I, I, w- I didn't care for that stuff. Okay. So we're going to shift to graduation and afterwards then. Okay. So, uh, what year did you graduate? I graduated in '89, mm-hmm. December of '89, mm-hmm. um, with my um, bachelor's in early child no, I, a BS in mm-hmm. elementary education. Yes. I'm having a brain freeze, but I. Um, I graduate with a BS in elementary education, Mm -hmm. um, K-6, Mm -hmm. with a minor in early childhood education. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was, like I said, in December of 89. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, where did you go after that? I stayed here. Mm -hmm. I I got a job at Millis Road Elementary, um, teaching fourth grade. Mm -hmm. Um, Taught there. At the same time, I was approached... uh, by Coach Weaver over at Grimsley, who was a counselor there when I was there, and he had formerly coached uh, men's basketball, and he was my softball coach when I was there. Mm-hmm. Um, sort of re- got recruited to coach women's basketball over at Grimsley. Okay. Was that the first time you coached? Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, in addition to that, 
I was asked to um, help out with an AAU basketball team. Mm -hmm. So all this, you know, mm -hmm. coming at is like, mm -hmm. okay, <laughs> welcome to the real world. Right. Um, and so I was helping with the, uh, I think it was the Greensboro Emeralds with Randy Doss. Um, I did that a little bit with him, and then. Um, I was. I ended up coaching over at Grimsley. I did that for eight years. So mm -hmm. I was coaching, teaching at Millers Road Elementary in Jamestown. Would leave there, rush to Grimsley for mm -hmm. practice, right. um, and I did that for eight years. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, with after you know, it's like okay, what's next? And so that's when I decided. Um, I was going to try a couple of things. That's, I think the WNBA, no, that was after the third year. It was my third year of teaching and the, w, the WNBA started. Mm -hmm. And people were like, Angie, you need to go try out. You need to go try out. Well, I contemplated, contemplated trying out. Mm -hmm. And I decided, okay, either I'm going to try it for the WNBA or I'm going to go to Hollywood, uh, go to California, uh, for year for the uh, National Modeling and Talent Association, this big thing with people from all over the world, because um, I was with a modeling agency mm -hmm. at the time. Okay. Um, and so, at the careful thought, I was like, I don't want to leave my students. I I just could not leave my students. I was like, I don't want to leave my kids, and so. I opted to go to California for a week for this big modeling thing mm -hmm. um, because I was like, if I go to the NBA, you know, I'm going to leave my students. But then it's like, I can do the modeling stuff on the side. You know, I was justifying all that. Mm -hmm. And so I went to California and I um, got a lot of callbacks. Then they were saying, we want you to move out to California. I was like, I'm not moving out to California. I'm not leaving my students. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so um, I didn't, I ended up not doing that. I didn't do the MBA, the WNBA. I didn't do any of that. Mm -hmm. um, I just said, I'm staying with my students. I'll just coach, you know, the um, high school basketball. And so I, I did that, like I said, up to eight years. Mm -hmm. um, and then Coach AG um, called and asked me if I wanted to be her assistant coach. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it and I said, you know what, let me give it a try. Mm -hmm. Curiosity got the best of me, wanted to see if this is for me. Mm -hmm. I was missing the kids. I, um, excuse me, loved working with the college girls. I loved the, the, the practices, but I became like a big sister and giving advice and, and those things and I, I was loving that. Um, I love game time, um, but I absolutely hated all of the travel. I was gone all the time. I couldn't go to church because um, we were all at practice or on the road. Mm -hmm. um, didn't get to spend much time with my family. Um, at the time, um, I got engaged. And then my husband, he told me, he said, if you think <laughs> I'm going to stay in the gym, be in the gym every weekend, you have nothing coming. <laughs> so that became, you know, became too much. Mm -hmm. And so after two years of being a, an assistant coach, I, I told Lynn that I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, but then um, she asked me to come, you know, do it on a part-time basis. So I went back to teaching and I decided I'm going to work with kids with learning disabilities mm -hmm. and I did the coaching part time where she said well you don't have to come to all you know you come after school you can come to the games you know that type of thing and so that's what I did mm -hmm. um, for one year and so um, after that it was like I can't do both uh, and then I decided to um, apply to get my national board certification and while I was applying for that, the district sent out an email about a joint program between UNCG and Guilford County Schools where they were going to select, um, I think they selected 22 people to, um, they were gonna pay for their masters. Mm -hmm. And so I applied um, at the same time that I was looking at doing my national board certification. And um, I think there were 89 applicants. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the 22 that they selected out of the 89. And so worked on, um, applied, got accepted. Then I got a call 
um, because what the district did is they interviewed all of the people that were applying. Well, I got calls to be an assistant principal before I got my before I took my first class. Wow. Um, it's like I saw your interview. You'd be great. And I was like, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Talk to my pastor. Talk to my mother. Talk to my husband. And it was like, well, go for it. And so I accepted the assistant principal position before I took any classes. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up doing my first assistant uh, principal position and getting my master's at the same time. Wow. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it was good. Yeah. But I mean, it was real world hands on. Right. I was doing both at the same time. So right. it was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, but I learned a lot. Yeah. It, it, was, it was good. Mm -hmm. And so how did you get brought into the middle college after that? Well, I did that, um, you know, I was two years at Eastern Guilford because that was Joe Farrell. He was the principal there. He mm -hmm. called me and asked me to come um, and interview. I interviewed at a couple because um, different people had requested that I uh, take their job. I turned, no, I turned um, Stewart, I think was his name. I turned him down because mm -hmm. I was like, no. And then I got another, I was like, why are they calling me already? I was like, I haven't even taken any classes. <laughs> um, I was like, well, that's an honor. It's a compliment. You did really well in your interview. Um, and so I t um, took that one. Um, and right away after a year, he was like, you need to apply to be a principal. I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> I was like, I just started. I haven't even finished my master's. Um, and so did that two years, finished that degree, um, and got moved. Um, the district moved me from um, Eastern. As soon as I finished my degree, they moved me from Eastern to ACOC, mm -hmm. ACOC Middle School, mm -hmm. which was, um, you know, inner city mm -hmm. challenges, um, which, you know, it's right up my alley. I, I, those are my people. Right. I come from the projects. Right. Um, and so they put a whole administra new administrative team over there and uh, loved it. We did some amazing things over there. We put some things in place for mm -hmm. those kids. Uh, things start turning around. The data was going up, discipline going down. Um, we, we did some wonderful, some amazing things over mm -hmm. there with those kids. Mm -hmm. And so I was there, um, and I heard, I had, you know, I was hearing about all these middle colleges. And so it was like, um, I was like, well, why doesn't UNCG have one? And, you know, and I'm because I advocate for UNCG no matter what. Right. You know, when I, I'm around, you know, in our community and it's anti anti, and I'm like, ghost boards, they're like, girl, please. <laughs> you know, um, so I'm like, anti has one. Era, era, when is UNCG going to get one? And it's like, well, they're not, they're not. And then years later, then it's like, UNCG is getting a middle car. I said, that's my school. Mm -hmm. I claimed it. Mm -hmm. I spoke it. Mm -hmm. I said, that's my school. Mm -hmm. And so um, when I heard it, I went to the people that were from the district level. I said, um, I can do UNCG. And they're like, well, Angie, you're not even a principal. I said, I know. I said, I can do UNCG. I said, that's my school. Mm -hmm. And um, she, she said, uh, Dr. World, she goes, well, Angie, um, you don't have high school experience. You don't have principalship experience. They, they want someone with experience and I, I said I know I said but I respectfully disagree I can do UNCG mm -hmm. and time went by they interviewed people I, I submitted my application anyway right. they interviewed this person experienced all the people that just knew they were going to get it didn't, didn't get the right fit I get a call maybe I don't know if it was a month later but it, it was some, some time passed mm -hmm. and it was like we want you to come in for an interview. Mm -hmm. I went in for that interview. Home run, <laughs> three point, whatever you want to call it. Sure. And they called me. I don't. I believe it was probably the next day, within a day or two. And it's like, you got the job. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I told you, I could do you at CG. <laughs> and so, at that point, I, I got the notebook. There was a notebook, and that was it. Mm -hmm. Nothing was in place mm -hmm. um, there were some I, I, I'll take that back the money on how the school was going to be funded through the state the, the you know the race to the top grants the um, mission possible all of that stuff mm -hmm. you know the powers that be yeah um, for um, that that part was worked out um, 
And so what I had to do is I had to come up with, you know, the curriculum, mm -hmm. um, you know, pull in what's going to be offered. I mean, there were some suggestions, um, but I, I had a notebook and I had to put everything in place. I had to hire the teachers. I had to um, select the students. Um, it, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. um, there were a hundred and something applications um, and I had to select uh, 50. I had to select 50 of them. And I uh, went through, interviewed probably I think 75 of them. At the time I was, it was like, you need to, I was like, I have to interview all these people. <laughs> so interviewed them, selected the first 50. Uh, and most of them came from ACOC because I knew their stories and because I was hired in April right the others the, I think they had already gone through the process so I didn't have the luxury of having from January or February until March or April to select mm -hmm. and so I just remember having a meeting over at ACOG and ha had the eighth graders come to the auditorium and invited them to apply. Mm -hmm. And so I did select several of those students because I knew their stories, I knew their hardships, mm -hmm. I knew they needed an environment that, you know, these middle colleges were supposed to offer, single parent homes, um, you know, first generation college goers, just foster home, homeless, just all those things. Mm -hmm. um, and so. I made sure that those kids, some of those kids had the opportunity to come here. And thank God I did because of that, they graduated mm -hmm. um, from high school, whereas there was a possibility some of them wouldn't have had they not come to right. the middle college at UNCG. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's how um, it started out, getting a lot of those kids. Uh, I did a lot of research, I'm backing up a little bit, I did a lot of research on middle colleges mm -hmm. whenever I started, whenever I applied. And so um, when I, uh, before I applied, I actually put a plan in place of things that I would do. I put in a tentative schedule because it, it talked about in the research that I had about how most middle colleges had like an open, not, not open time, but something they call, I called it connections. It was a window of time where um, you give students personalized attention, sort of like an AA, mm -hmm. an advisor advising period. Right. And so I, I put that in the schedule where, um, you know, we could have uh, assemblies, we could have guest speakers come in. It could be a time where the teachers just, you know, what do you have going on with the students? Help them with work. So that's incorporated in our schedule. And, and I had all that stuff laid out. I had so much, so many details laid out, and I came so prepared for the interview. So that helped. Um, and so that again contributed to me getting that call. I do believe. Mm -hmm. um, and so once they said, "We're hiring you. You're hired." I left, uh, I started April 1st, and so I left um, ACOG, oh, excuse me, my heart broke, mm -hmm. oh, my heart broke, but I left ACOG, and um, I had an office downtown, went to the office, and it, I was just like, what do I do? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I don't have any principalship experience. Right. Here I am, like, what did I get myself into? But knowing me, like I do, it's like, just start. Open the book. Let's read. Let's find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. Open that book. And I still had that notebook. Mm -hmm. Looked at the details and said, okay, where do we start? Well, we got to interview. I, got to, I need some teachers. Mm -hmm. What positions? What is in the budget? Because, you know, they gave and say, okay, first you can hire three teachers. These are the three teachers you need to hire. Second year, three more, and you can order uh, order. You can hire a counselor. So I had to go through and do all that. Had to post those positions. Had to read resumes, interview people, all of that stuff. Interview parents. I, I, just the whole nine yards. Um, had to go to Raleigh a lot for um, North Carolina New Schools Project um, to learn more about middle colleges, and so a lot going on. A lot going on. So I was being thoroughly educated mm -hmm. on middle colleges and what these programs were about. And so 
so I'm like, this is perfect. This is right up my alley. At-risk kids, you know, that have great potential or that may not thrive in a traditional setting, that just need somebody to believe in them, um, give them the opportunity um, to just flourish and, and, and become more than they've ever dreamed they could become. You know, and so I was like, this is so me. This is perfect for me. Uh, and so that's really, uh, you know, I just have a passion for helping kids blossom and just giving them an opportunity um, where they may not have thought that they would have an opportunity. All right. So is there anything else you wish we had talked about yet? Yeah, because otherwise I'm hitting the um, sort of rounding up ending questions. Well, right now... Um, there's just so much um, when I look at you know start if we look at the middle college mm -hmm. let's, let's just start there mm -hmm. if I look at the middle college our first year we had you know 50 students had three teachers a counselor myself and one office support that was very challenging to start a school from scratch to have such a small staff even though I only had 50 students and three teachers I still was responsible for doing the same things that traditional schools that may have 2,000 2, students all the deadline everything you still had to do all of that so right. that was challenging but in spite of that our very first year we were an honor school of excellence show me I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. okay. Second year, third year, just kept adding the layers. Just adding the layers. For the last, for 2000, our first graduating class was 2015. 100% mm -hmm. graduation rate. 2016, 100% graduation rate. 2017, 100% graduation rate. 2015, 16, 17. We are listed in U.S. News and World Report as one of America's best high schools. This past year, or we're in the process of this now, um, we were named, the district nominated us for uh, America's best urban schools. Well, we were the only school in the state of North Carolina selected as a finalist, and there's only 18 in the whole country that we selected. And so they came in February to visit with us. And we will find out in May whether we are, like, I guess they're going to narrow it down to maybe three or four. And so if we are selected for that, we will go to San Diego where they will name who America's Best Urban School is. So the thing, the, I, I say all of that because it goes back to when Mr. Scales took me aside. I didn't know how to do a layup. I didn't know how to be a principal. But it was in me. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the talent, the ability was in me. Mm -hmm. He took me aside and showed me how to do it. I didn't know how to do this. But the abilities were there. Show me what I need to do. I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. When you do things to the best of your ability, great things happen. Basketball. Again, couldn't do a layup, but I became an All-American because someone showed me what I needed to do. Somebody had the faith, the confidence in me to take me aside, to spend time with me after practices. Here, do this, Angie. Okay, is this right? Yeah, repetition, do it over and over again. Oh, I'll stay here two hours with you. Just show me, show me. <laughs> Having that thirst, that, that, that yearning to just be your absolute best, to get everything out of you and leave it on the court, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I take that same mentality in my job with my kids. These are my babies. I love these kids as if they were my own. Um, and I, I want to see them prosper. I want to see them become all that they could possibly become. When I was at ACOG, one of the teacher teachers said, um, he talked about what excellence is. And so I tell my students, I use this. Excellence is the process of becoming better than what you were the day before. When he said that, I was like, that is good. So you, you, all you can do is 
do your absolute best. My excellence is not going to be your same. It's not going to be the same as yours. But if you're doing your absolute best and then you build on it each day, that's all you can do. Mm-hmm. That's all you can do. And that is how I live. That's, that's, that's who I am. And that is what has helped me to get where I am today. So our wrap-up questions are sort of overall. Okay. So um, what do you remember about any of the um, chancellors you, um, you were under? I think you came in under Moran. Mm-hmm. Any memories of Moran? Chancellor um, Moran, he was, um, I mean, I didn't have, he knew who I was and I knew who he was mm-hmm. um, because he would be at, the way I know that he knew who I was because after he left, whenever we would be on, you know, at different events, because I continued to go to UNCG events, he always, hey Angie, how are you? You know, talked like he knew me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember um, I was, once I, I don't know if it was my senior year or shortly after I left, I was asked to be on the um, Chancellor's Advisory Committee. Mm-hmm. And so I was on, that, on his um, advisory committee for a while. Um, so what I remember about him is he seemed to be very, um, seemed to be a nice person, but I didn't feel like uh, he was, I didn't feel as comfortable as I felt with Sullivan, Sullivan and Brady, mm-hmm. but I was an adult when I met them. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was a respect thing. Sure, it was like that's the chancellor. Yeah, almost like that's the president of right. the United States. Right. Um, and but he seemed to be very nice. He seemed to be a very nice person. Mm-hmm. I never had any negative encounters with him or heard any negative negativity about him. Mm-hmm. Um, he, you know, seemed to have the university's best interest at heart, uh, from from my perspective, from sure. where I was looking. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. Okay. You know, I, I don't know. That's fair. And Sullivan? Sullivan wasn't here. I mean, I had gr- graduated. I had graduated. But I wasn't sure if you were an assistant coach at that time. Yes, I was. Mm-hmm. Um, she was. Oh, she was. I, I loved her. Mm-hmm. Um, I had more. Like, again, I was an adult by now. Sure. Um, I had a really. Um, the best relationship I had was with Brady. Okay. But I had a good relationship with Sullivan. Um, you know, she always she was always smiling. I smile all the time also. And so it was always, hey, Angie. You know, um, that type of thing. And um, very, very, I had a lot of respect for her. She seemed, she came across as a very strong woman. Um, and I admired that mm-hmm. because, you know, again, being a woman, um, when you're a woman in leadership, things are a lot tougher for you mm-hmm. than if you were a man in leadership. Mm-hmm. And to compound that, being a black woman in leadership, things are much tougher. Um, and so um, I look at strong women and, you know, just, you know, take note of how they ha- handle themselves and carry themselves and um, see what I can learn mm-hmm. um, from them. And so I saw her as, um, she smiled all the time. That, that, that definitely remember that. But um, she seemed, you know, from what I, the encounters I had mm-hmm. with her, she seemed to, um, she seemed to know what she was doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when Linda Brady came, that's mm-hmm. when I came on, I was here as a, a you know, principal. Linda Brady and I, we just connected, you know, quickly because I was going to a lot of um, events and then this, the middle college was her baby. Mm -hmm. And so I think by, I don't want to say default, but by um, the natural course of things, it made sense that we ended up having a good relationship because I'm building this program that's part of her strategic plan, Mm -hmm. uh, her baby. She approved it, she pushed it forward with the board of trustees and all that stuff. So um, it needed to be successful. And so we, um, and with her, she she loved athletics. Mm -hmm. And so with me being a former student athlete, Mm -hmm. um, 
being at the helm of this program, it was perfect. Mm -hmm. um, all of the ingredients were there. It's like, because one thing about UNCG, UNCG has always looked out for its own. Mm -hmm. um, that's a reputation that UNCG has, is that, you know, we will look out for each other. Mm -hmm. um, and so I felt that. I felt like I was at home again, um, and I felt the support. I mean, Linda Brady was very, very supportive mm -hmm. of the middle college um, at UNCG and of me. I mean, every time we would be at an event just about, she would say, and there's my favorite principal. And I'm just like, okay, people going to get tired of you saying that. Don't say that. <laughs> you know, but she would. She would She would acknowledge me um, at different events and um, she it, at speeches, which when she'd say speeches, a lot of times she would include something about the middle college in it. So, you know, that support was just there. Mm -hmm. uh, she did, we met whenever I needed some things, you know, getting things going. She provided support and resources for the middle college. Uh, so she, she was very supportive, mm -hmm. very supportive, uh, came and visited with us. So she did a lot uh, to help get the middle college going because, again, it was her baby. Right, right. Um, uh, it was a part of her strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And any extra interaction with Gilliam? I've had limited interaction with him so far because I know um, his focus is on um, making sure UNCG is no longer the best kept secret. Right. And, and I said, I, I get it. I mm -hmm. understand. I said, he is busy out there spreading the word about UNCG. He's doing a, a lot outside of the city, mm -hmm. in Raleigh, across the country, and all that. And so um, I understand that this is not his um, his baby, so to speak, sure. but I know that he is supportive. Mm -hmm. um, he's shown his support by way of last year. He hosted the first um, senior dinner for our graduates um, mm -hmm. in the alumni house. Oh, um, nice. And that was, it was very nice. He spoke, um, our superintendent came, so it was a very nice event mm -hmm. um, that he, he hosted for us. Okay. And uh, are there any other um, professors uh, that you haven't mentioned yet that you'd like to? Sam Miller. Mm -hmm. Sam Miller was phenomenal over in uh, the School of Education. Mm -hmm. I'll never, I forget, I remember his exam question to this day. And it, it was that deep. It could be an exam question today mm -hmm. that would be interesting to see what students say. And the question was, do good teachers make good classroom managers or do good classroom managers make good teachers? That's some deep stuff. It, it, it was so deep. And you had to be a part of it to, to get it. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember that. We had to do a paper on that mm -hmm. with your argument. Right. Yeah, it, 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 he, he did. And I used that question as a part like when I'm interviewing teachers mm -hmm. I, I, it's not the exact same because mm -hmm. I mean we don't have time for them to do a whole paper. <laughs> you know paper on it but my question I often ask is okay explain to me what classroom management is and explain to me what discipline is you know and I ask those two things because to see if they understand the difference between the two because those things help define who a teach what a teacher is mm -hmm. what a good teacher is and and I and, and when I wrote that question, I thought about his exam. I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sam Miller. Uh, he, he was he was phenomenal. He, and and his approach to thing, he probes you. He, he he did a lot. He didn't just give you answers. Sam Miller, um, Nancy Back. She was in the School of Education. She was um, someone that I remember. Um, her husband was there too. It was Nancy and, gosh, what was his name? But I remember Nancy back more than I do her husband for some reason. Um, who else back when I was getting my undergrad? I've already said Karen King, and I've said Dr. Rosenberg, and I was Dr. Calhoun. Um, those were those were the main teachers that or professors that stood out to me that had a greater impact on me. Um, that that I can remember right okay. now. Now, when I did my um, got my masters, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Rice Rice Rizug, um, in the School of Education, mm -hmm. um, I really he was really good, and um, <laughs> I'll just say Dr. Gauze, he was so funny. He was hilarious. <laughs> he was, sorry. 
Wow, he used to give us such a hard time. It's like, what? You know, <laughs> but he didn't care. But, um, but he gave us a hard time. And, you know, we were adults. And it's just like, who does he think he, you know, that type of thing. But when you think back on it, it's like, He's challenging you to be better, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes people don't understand that right. when you, when you're being challenged like that. At the time, it's like he crazy, uh, or she crazy, but it's like oh now I get it. And see, and I think I'm that way in some instances where I'm tough. I I, I believe in tough love. I, I believe in tough love, and I'm gonna challenge you to do your absolute best. I'm not going to just hand you anything. I believe in you don't have to work for it because you appreciate it better. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so, but, you know, Dr. Goss comes to mind. Um, and then who else did I have for my master's? Right Zoog was the main, um, he, he, he did, he did a really good job. Mm -hmm. um, he was very patient and worked with you more. Um, being a full time, having a full time job and taking college classes. Um, Dr. Um, Lashley um, was, you know, played an instrumental role in helping the group finalize their master's um, program. And then um, Dr. Lashley, I didn't have Hooper, I mean Cooper, but I did have Misty Williams. Uh, but she's no longer here. But Misty Williams, she was very good. She she did an outstanding job. Mm -hmm. Um, so th those are the main people that I can think of now that probably be like, oh, God, I didn't mention this person or that person, but it has been 30 years. Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you gave me a good list of people. I think yeah. you're fine. Yeah. Yes. Um, any colleagues here at the Biddle College that stand out? Uh, for what, my high school or my teacher? No, um, as a as You the mean university people? No, I mean as a founding principal at the middle college, looking at it from that perspective mm -hmm. now, looking at people who are part of the middle college the, of UNC. The original? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, right now th there's only one person um, that is still here that came in as an original member of my staff, mm -hmm. um, and that's Miss Browning. Um, the, you know, like I said, I had three teachers mm -hmm. um, starting out, and... Um, and, and when I say original staff, I'm meaning from that first year. Right, right. Um, so the first teacher didn't even make it through the first year. Mm. I mean, he had to go by Christmas. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and then um, Miss Rhea, she was phenomenal. Her husband moved to California, so she had to move with him. Sure. And then um, Sean Reeves, he just left two years ago and he's become an assistant principal. So he's an assistant principal. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the three original teachers that I had here at the middle college. Um, and I'm telling you, the foundation, the work that they put in to, you know, to get this school going, mm -hmm. phenomenal, mm -hmm. phenomenal. Uh, couldn't have done it without them. Uh, it was challenging, but we all chipped in and did what we had to do to get this school started. And there's a sense of pride uh, when, you know, when you talk to them, it's like, I was talking to Ms. Browning today. She's like, we're the first, we're the only two that's left. She's <laughs> like, and you know, we have a student that's in danger of not, you know, potentially graduating. And we've had that before. And she's like, she is not gonna be the first one we have, Ms. <laughs> Pope Jones. I said, I know, we're gonna make sure of it. Um, and so it, it's that, type of thing. It's like you have that sense of pride because you were here from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. You, we were here um, going through all the struggles, trying to get everything, trying to get supplies, not having any funding, um, having limited money um, to actually buy supplies and, and borrowing and going to this department. And so they were a part of that original group um, mm -hmm. that were part of the original struggle. Mm -hmm. and so um, th those you know, those are the people that I think about the most when I think about starting the middle college. Um, it, it's really hard because uh, we are understaffed to a certain extent, mm -hmm. but people look from the outside and say, oh, you only have 200 students. You don't need, but there's still so much more to it. Sure. Um, like my counselor. I only have one counselor. And we, I get complaints all the time about her not being available. Parents complain, students complain. She can never, um, the registration process takes too long or she doesn't return calls. That's because she's the only counselor. Please be patient with her. Just like I'm the only administrator. 
I can't be everywhere. Sometimes I'm out of the building. I have meetings two or three times. Well, you're not available. Uh, I'm the only one. You know, let me know when you're available and I'll work with you. Uh, so it's, it's those types of things that can be challenging. But, but at the end of the day, we're doing great work here. We're, we're touching the lives of students and giving them opportunities that they would never have had had they gone to a traditional school. And I say that respectfully, mm -hmm. not to put down traditional schools right. in any way, but because the numbers are so large in the traditional schools, they can't do what we're able to do, the personalized attention. Um, the, we're focused. We're focused on health, medical, and youth development. Uh, so we do a lot. We're able to do a lot more than they can do. And not to mention exposing them to a college environment to give them that boost or that confidence. Hey, you can do this. You can actually go to college. Mm -hmm. You can handle that environment. This is what it's like. So we're slowly transitioning them to that environment so that they can be successful and know that they can be successful. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got last two questions. Mm -hmm. Anything else you wish we had talked about that we haven't gotten to? I can't think of anything now. Okay. I mean, if there, if there is something, I'll email you. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll work that out. Okay. Um, so these are just intended to look back for the okay. long answers. Okay. So tell me how UNCG has affected your life and what it means to you. How has UNCG affected my life and what it means to you? A as I said earlier, UNCG has helped to set me up to be where I am, without question. Mm -hmm. UNCG is partially responsible for my success. Um, I give, as I said earlier, um, as I said earlier, the majority of my um, person that's responsible is my mother, my mother and God. Um, though in God first, mm -hmm. then my mother, but my mother is the one that instilled God in us very early, keeping us in church. Um, I watched her pray all the time and talk about God's going to work it out. If, whenever we didn't have something or food or what, God's going to work it out. And he always did. And so um, that faith, watching my mother show and, and, and demonstrate faith like that, um, helped um, to build me, build my character. And then uh, coming over here to UNCG, and then been a part of such an amazing women's basketball program where Lynn Agee um, was so supportive and wanted to expose us and wanted to educate us, wanted us to experience a different culture. And, and so all of that together is what has caused me to be where I am. If I had not come to UNCG, would I be successful? Who knows? Probably because of my mother and the foundation that she set and me watching her work all the time to have something probably would have been successful. But my experiences would have been different. You know, and again, I don't know if it would have been worse, bad, you know, or what have you, mm -hmm. but my experiences would have been different. And, and the thing that I love about the fact that I came to UNCG is because I grew up in the projects, okay? Then I went to, you know, I went to Jones Elementary. I went to Jones Elementary, Hunter Elementary, Faust Elementary. So I went to three different element and Lindley Elementary. So I went to four elementary schools, okay? Then I went to Jackson. Jackson at the time, I believe, was it predominantly, it was, it was probably 50-50, I believe, because I remember some of the, you know, the white kids, Monica, and um, that's funny that I remember them. Um, I can see their faces. Um, so I remember that, but I remember there being, I remember some racial tension there. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to Grimsley, and Grimsley was predominantly white. And then they redrew the lines, and so the project kids were shipped to Grimsley, or shipped, sent to Grimsley. And so that experience, I'm glad that I had those experiences because it has helped to make me well-rounded. Because UNCG, 
as I said, I didn't realize how much of a minority I was when I came to UNCG. Mm -hmm. I think it's because of those, ex I had experienced some different cultures and being around more Caucasian people um, than in the past, almost like the little kid in Idaho, oh, look, mommy, there's a black person type thing. It wasn't that type of experience for me because I had been exposed to it a little along the way. Um, and so when I think about that and I think about basketball, to me, we didn't, I, I say this, there was no color. We didn't, we were sisters. We looked out for each other. We were unified. We had each other's back. I mean, we were teammates. At least that's how I felt. And so um, I think that along with being on UNCG's campus, um, it did, it, it, it helped to shape, it helped to shape who I am. Because uh, I mean, obviously, it, UNCG was predominantly white back then. Mm -hmm. But I'm sitting here going, I didn't realize, <laughs> I didn't think about it <laughs> at the time. So that that's interesting to me. That's mm -hmm. why I'm I'm pausing because sure. I'm like, you know what? You know it was predominantly white. It was only two of y'all on the team, <laughs> but I didn't see it, mm -hmm. which is really interesting. I didn't I didn't think of it that way. That's interesting. And you know, in my community, it's interesting because there's always, you know, and it's out of fun in the black community. It's like A&T, Aggie Pride, and no matter what, I always go Spartan Pride, and I was like, really, Angie? You know, it's like, well, I'm a Spartan, I'm not an Aggie. And, you know, so I always, I, I'm always the outsider, so to speak, whenever everybody's doing Aggie Pride and all this, I'm like, Spartan pride, you mm -hmm. know, and I and I stick to my guns, mm -hmm. and so I feel like as a result of me sticking to my guns, and um, people see me and have referred to me as Miss UNCG in the Black community, and because of my success over here at UNCG, I believe that UNCG is more accepted, and I don't want to give myself that much credit. But that, that's, that's what tends to happen. Mm -hmm. People know me that I don't know them. Mm -hmm. And they will say things like, I remember you played at UNCG. You know, whether it can be a custodian, it could be someone in housekeeping, um, or it could be somebody that is a manager somewhere, you know, but that's older is like, I watched you play, you know, that type of thing. And so it's like, wow, mm -hmm. I didn't realize the impact that I was having. And I remember um, calling to do orders, I mean, to order um, shirts or something. Um, it was a, some company, and they were like, are you the Angie Pope that played basketball at UNCG? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I watched you play. You did, and I'm like, okay. You know, so that's when I started having a lot of aha moments. It's like, a lot of people know me. <laughs> You know, and, and it was almost, people were saying, you know you're a local celebrity. And I was like, no, I'm not. I was like, I don't know, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just Angie. But I had to start embracing that and accepting that it wasn't a bad thing and that it was okay for me to accept that a little bit, but also at the same time, not to get the big head. Sure. Um, and then when a few years ago, um, I was approached by uh, a little local magazine, um, Sports Kids Play, um, to do an article on me as a local sports legend. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and they did the article on me. Mm -hmm. So it was this whole big old, you know, mm -hmm. article. Mm -hmm. and, and so I was just like, okay, well, I need to embrace this. Mm -hmm. um, and then, what, two years ago, I was um, interviewed on TCT, the Christian Television Network, um, Total Christian um, Television, as I, I guess somebody, <laughs> you know, um, and it was called Beyond the Gold. And this was shown internationally and nationally. And so I did that. And so it, when I think about all those things, it's like, oh. Well, Hmm. But it, it's, it's intriguing, but it's also uncomfortable. Sure. You know, because I'm not, I don't 
I'm not the type of person to go around and toot my horn. And so even when I'm talking to you, you know, and it's just like, okay, I'm just gonna put it out there. I had to learn I had to learn how to do this mm -hmm. and, and to take pride in telling a story. Take pride in celebrating your accomplishment and your success and not, not apologizing for it. Mm -hmm. You know, and some people could look at it and say, Oh, look at her, she's this and that but I don't care. I'm older now. That stuff doesn't bother me anymore. But it used to. It's like, I don't want anybody to think I'm being arrogant. or yeah. No, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. These things have happened. Mm -hmm. um, hard work pays off. Mm -hmm. and, and at the end of the day, that's my story. My story is about hard work, determination, perseverance, doing everything, putting everything out there, not giving up. That, that's my story. Show me and I'll do it. So these uh, interviews are for the 125th anniversary of mm -hmm. UNCG, which is a good time for us to look back and s reflect on where we've come from, but also a good chance for us to look to see where we're going to be. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is the future of UNCG? Where do you think we'll be in the next 25 to 50 mm -hmm. years? That's a good question. That's a good question. When I think, I look back to when I was here. And I see the progress that the university has made. I mean, just if you just look at the campus alone, amazing. Because I, I look at Gray. There used to be a street. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. There used to be a street in front of Gray. And, you know, I remember them saying, we want to make this a walking campus. Cars zooming. And so they did it. So it's interesting to sit back. And here, you know, you hear little things and then you see it implemented. It's like, they said they were gonna do it, they did it. Mm -hmm. I remember them talking about a new student center, student union, mm -hmm. okay? I remember the little one we had, and then it's like, there we have it, there's mm -hmm. EUC. Mm -hmm. uh, so the one thing that I, I can say is like, when UNCG say they're gonna do it, they're gonna do it, mm -hmm. and they're gonna do it big. Mm -hmm. And so when I, I, I look at where, you know, look at that, the, the, the dorms, the apartments, uh, Lee Street, excuse me, Gate City Boulevard now. Um, I remember there used to be houses all down Kenilworth. Mm -hmm. You know, they got rid of all of those houses. So when I look at this university and I look at where it was when I was here, it's like a, a whole new place. And so when I think about where is it going to be 25 years from now, I see Leash, Gate City Boulevard now. I see us taking over. I see Gate City Boulevard being our Franklin Boulevard that Carolina has. I see um, the, the, the diversity of the university continuing to grow because UNCG is one of the most diverse um, campuses in the UNC system. There have been people that have actually come over here that didn't, you know, know it's like, I thought I was on A&T's campus, <laughs> you know. I didn't know UNCG had that many, um, you know, minority or, or blacks. It's like, yeah, UNCG has, has really put forth the effort to make the campus more diverse. Um, and so I, I think that the direction that they're headed in is very positive. Um, the inclusiveness is important, especially given this day and time with everything that's going on in this country. Um, it's important that UNCG continues to be as inclusive as it is now um, and take it to another level. Um, as far as um, build, I mean, when I look at athletics, because our program, I was here and this, you know, we didn't talk about this during the, the original part of the interview, but my senior year was very hard for me and it's because we were we started out division three and we had to prove ourselves so that we could move to division one it was during my time mm. so I lost the opportunity to play in any type of tournament or anything my senior year but that was a sacrifice that I would that we had to do in order for the whole program it wasn't about me it wasn't about self it was bigger than in the, the individuals. And so the fact that we went from Division Three, 
we had to play ACC schools and we beat them. Mm -hmm. We beat Maryland, we beat Clemson. Who else did we beat? Those are the main two top schools that I remember um, beating. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we played Division Two, So we had to play up the higher levels for two years before the university could go to Division One. So we had to prove ourselves, and we did. And so now that we went from Division Three to Division Two to Division One, we're in a position now because of the success, you know, obviously that the men's basketball program had the, the last couple of years, um, to move up, you know, in that mid-major um, bracket and move away from being, sometimes I think people may still see us as a Division three school um, or Division two school, but the success that we're having and our women, they were very successful last year. This year they weren't successful, but they had all sophomores and freshmen. That's to be understood. Mm -hmm. People underestimate sometimes the importance of leadership. And see, you had all those seniors on there last year, mm -hmm. and they went 20-something, they won 20-something games. Right. But they lost all their leadership. Mm -hmm. And sophomores, they, they're not ready to be the leaders um, that you need in order to take a team to that next level. And so, but I think that next year you'll have more juniors, and I think that they will actually be as successful. I think Coach Patterson has done a phenomenal job and I think that she will continue to do a great job. And Wes Miller, oh, he's doing a really great job. He started out rough, mm -hmm. but he grew. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that the, the university will continue to grow um, as far as sports. I mean, base, the baseball team, mm -hmm. I remember when the baseball team first came on the scene, they were doing some really great things and putting players in the uh, major leagues mm -hmm. and so and soccer so we 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 have a lot of great things going on our volleyball um, all of our programs and you know we had um, our track star I mean, to go to the Olympics mm -hmm. um, so w again UNCG is doing some really great things and, and there we're we're on the map we might be a dot but more and more um, we're branching out. We're, it, we're, we're going to be known. Um, and I think that um, Chancellor Gilliam has made it his mission um, to make sure that we're not the best kept secret in Greensboro. Um, I agree with him. I, I used to get sick of hearing it too about, oh, UNCG is the best kept secret. It's like, we're not a secret. We're not a secret. You know, stop saying that. We are UNCG. We are the G, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and we want you to know about the great things that are going on over here because UNCG has a lot of good things going on. I, I am so proud of this university. I'm so proud to be a Spartan. Um, I, I tell you, when mm -hmm. I, I I think sometimes it's like, let me see, is it no? It, okay, make sure I'm not bleeding blue and gold <laughs> um, because I have such a, a love for the university because I'm appreciative mm -hmm. um, of the opportunity and all the great things that it's doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Okay. That's it. Okay.